Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the most important and common problem in emergency room, that is snake bite. You know that in India, there are large number of snake bites we come across, especially in the rural India. Urban India also, we, we can get this type of problems. So, doctors should be very familiar with the uh, clinical manifestations in snake bite. Identifying snake is not that important, so uh, uh, we uh, discourage patients or bystanders to bring the snake to emergency room because that can be more dangerous in emergency room. But the clinical features that is very very important. Now we will see what are the common snakes we have in our country. There are four main families, Elapidae, Viperidae, Hydrophidae, Crotalidae. In that we have Cobra, Crate, Russell Viper, Saw Scaled Viper, Sea Snake and Pit Vipers. So Cobra and uh, Crate, they are mainly uh, neurotoxins, Vipers are mainly hematotoxins. There are other features also there, it, renal damage can be there, some will have some neurotoxicity. Sea Snake also will have predominantly muscle damage, kidney damage all these things. Pit wipers, again renal damage is very, very important. So, these are the four main families. So, there are large number of snake bites we can get in our country, around uh, 46,000 or 47,000 people die because of snake bite every year in our country, especially in rural areas. Now, what are the big fours in poisonous snakes in our country? The most important one is common cobra, then common crate, saw scaled viper, Russell viper. These are the four important poisonous snakes in our country. That is why they are called as big four. We will see the details of this. So, you can see here cobra, spectacle marks is typical, crate, you can see the identification mark. The cell swiper, scales are there, saw scaled wipers, pit wipers, all look similar, only pattern of design over the body is di different in this type of snakes. They both are, these both snakes are predominantly neurotoxic. Now, is identification of snake? Is it important in emergency room or not? That is a main question. It is not important to identify the snake. That is because sometimes even a poisonous snake, like a, if you get a common crate bite, sometimes the bite can be dry bite. That means there is no venom in the venom sac during the time of bite. So the venom will not be injected to the person or victim. So, there may not be any poison entering to the body of the victim. So, that patient will not have any clinical finding. So, identification of snake is good to avoid a bite from the snake, but once bitten, it is always the clinical finding that is very important. You can see here common wolf snake that looks same as almost same as the common crate. Common crate and wolf snake, if you see it, both are same. Only a person who can identify both the snakes properly can identify. So, there is no point in bringing the snake to the emergency room and sometimes it can be dangerous also to the doctors or nurses in the ER. So, no need to bring the uh, snake to the uh, emergency room, but most important is patient if they have a clinical finding then we have to treat, that is very important. So, identification of snake is good, but that is not essential to treat the patient, it is all clinical feature. Now, fang marks, is that really helpful in snake bite or not? That is the next question. So, we know that a poisonous snake will have a fang, that produces a fang mark like this. But if it is a, again, if it is a dry bite, there is no venom in the venom sac or it is not injected through the uh, fang, even if you get two dots like this, venom has not entered. So, patient will not have any clinical feature. 
So only if there is clinical feature, you need to treat. That is very important. But if you are seeing fang marks, should understand that patient had got a poisonous snake bite. So we should be very careful. We have to carefully look for clinical finding. That is the importance of fang marks. There are some snakes like crate. Crate will have a suppose cobra venom uh, like fang mark is like this. Crate will be very small. They are hypodermic needles like insulin syringe. So you may not see the fang mark at all in crate crate bite. And if the skin is dark, if the skin is already dark, and the two fang marks you can miss. So fang marks are important if you are seeing that. It is a sign of uh, envenomation, mostly there is a sign of envenomation, but always see the surrounding of the fang marks. So here, we are, if you are seeing an inflammation, that means the uh, snake has uh, bitten and the poisonous protein that has entered to your body, that reaction you are seeing surrounding the fang marks. So fang marks are helpful, but really not helpful to treat the patient. We need to have clinical features. So, if fang marks are there, there are no clinical findings, then that is a dry bite, there is no need to treat. But if the fang marks are there, even if there is a minimal clinical finding like localized edema, then you have to be ready with your treatment. Now, you can see here spider bite also can produce some, some type of fang mark like this. So, that produces lot of conf confusion in emergency room uh, in unknown bite. So we have to be very careful that marks are slightly different from the fang marks of the snake bite. This is snake bite is a uh, needle type of injury, two dots. Here it will be small ulceration. So that may be, uh, you can differentiate sometimes, but it will be difficult in a busy emergency room. So we have to be very careful. So that's why I am telling always look for clinical finding in this patient. So here also clinical finding is very important. The third one is local finding. Is it helpful? That is the one which is mostly helping the physician which uh, uh, by which we can make a diagnosis. So sometimes you can get a scratch mark like this. Scratch marks are commonly seen in uh, rat snake or non-poisonous snake. Whereas in uh, poisonous snakes, fangs are there, you get two dots. Okay, That is very important. Now local edema, local swelling, that is also important. Blubs are very important. Regional lymph nodes are very important. Painful, tender lymphadenopathy is a classical finding seen in snake bite. After 2-3 days, you can see the, the whole leg will be ulcerated like this, especially in uh, viper bites. Some conjunctival uh, redness, suffusion, all these things can also be there. So clinical findings are really helpful in snake bite other than the identification of snake or fang marks. Fang marks are helpful. I am not telling you they are not helpful. but Clinical, finding are, uh, clinical findings are the most important evidence for envenomation. Now, after getting a, a snake bite case, after getting a, after seeing a snake bite case, mostly uh, local people, they do lot of uh, uh, unwanted remedies or unwanted treatment on the spot, like putting a tight tourniquet like this, electric shock, or putting some stones on the white area. They are all contraindicated. There is no need to put a tourniquet here. There is a different method of putting tourniquet. This is not, this is a tight tourniquet. This can reduce the blood supply to the limb and you sometimes the patient may lose the limbs. Instead of that, you can put a crepe bandage like this, put a uh, wooden plank on the, uh, below the uh, leg and keep the leg on that wooden plank and put a elastic tape bandage or some uh, cloth around the uh, uh, bite area, above the bite area, so that the superficial circulation will be prevented and deep circulation will be okay. So limb will be getting blood, but superficial circulation will be cut off so that the rapid spread of the venom will be controlled, that is all. Next one is, before shifting the patient to hospital, Reassurance is very, very important. So if you, are, if you can take the patient to a uh, center where snake bite can be managed, that is enough. It can save the person. Immobilize the body because uh, uh, anxiety, walking uh, or exercise, all these 
things can increase the circulation and the venom can spread very fast. So, we have to mobilize, reassure, avoid any interference on the bite side. We have already shown that avoid any interference and you put an elastic type bandage like this. That is more than enough in managing snake bite in a local area or field. Now, is there a difference between uh, venom of large snake and small snake? There is no difference between large snake venom and small snake uh, venom. Sometimes uh, uh, the uh, younger uh, uh, snake will have a more dangerous venom or more, uh, more storage of venom than an adult snake. And is there any difference between uh, adult victim and child victim? No. The child victim has got uh, uh, like the, sometimes the amount of venom which is injected to a child, uh, relatively the amount will be larger than an adult. So, that produces sometimes a bad effect on the uh, victim. So, same amount of venom is injected to adult and child and since the body surface area or body area is less in a child, that can produce more problems in a child than an adult. Otherwise, there is no difference in clinical features. Now, when to start anti-snake venom? That is very important. When we are seeing a patient, we already discussed than your uh, uh, identification of snake or your fang marks. It is the clinical feature which will tell you whether the patient requires anti-snake venom or not. So, vomiting, abdominal pain, bleeding tendencies, ophthalmopegia, ptosis, neurological weakness like difficulty in breathing, myalgia, muscle stiffness, muscle tenderness, trismus, myoglobinuria that is red urine, renal failure, elevated creatinine, pituitary adrenal insufficiency that is low BP, all these things are very, very important. But remember the most early clinical finding will be local edema, local redness, local tenderness, local lymphadenopathy. This all due to snake is injecting a poisonous protein to your body that produces a local reaction that is very very important that is that will be the first sign of envenomation but that will be lesser in cobra bite than uh, viper bite will have a severe reaction than cobra bite now we can go for a syndromic approach uh, in clinical finding in snake uh, uh, snake bite management syndrome 1 local swelling bleeding disorders so all vipers are can produce this type of problem Syndrome 2, local swelling, bleeding disorder, shock, hypotension, renal, renal failure, humnose pit viper. Again, it is a viper, but it produces more, uh, more renal damage than other type of vipers. And it is prolonged also, that renal damage is prolonged and this pit viper uh, and the, uh, uh, venom will not respond to your uh, ASV. If the patient is already having all this finding and Additionally, they can have neurological finding like ptosis, external ophthalmopathy, facial weakness, then it can be a Russell swiper. So, you see all the vipers, Russell swiper have neurological problem. So, that is an additional clue for Russell swiper. Now, syndrome 3, local swelling, ptosis, external ophthalmopathy, facial weakness, it is a classical finding seen in cobra bite and it can be sometimes in crate bite also. But look at the crate uh, syndrome, that is syndrome for there is limited value for fang marks because they have hypodermic needle. That means the needle type fangs. Fangs are very, very uh, small. That produces very small dots. Sometimes in dark skin, you can miss it. Ptosis, external ophthalmopathy, facial weakness, fang marks are doubtful and bite during night time, snake is not seen, then it can be great. Bitten in C, then it can be sea snake. So, that is syndrome for us. Now, what is the difference between cobra venom and crate venom? Both are uh, almost similar. They produce uh, neurotoxicity, but the cobra venom is postsynaptic. That is very important, but whereas crate venom is presynaptic. So, this is presynaptic. So, the problem here is cobra venom is uh, not tightly bound with the uh, target organ, so it can be easily reversible with your ASV. Whereas, crate uh, venom 
is uh, irreversibly bound with your target organ. So, the reversibility is less. So, that uh, it is very difficult to reverse once the patient develop clinical features. But before clinical features, uh, uh, you can prevent it, but after paralysis, it is very difficult to reverse the problem. But whereas in Cobra, you can easily do it with your ASV or mechanical ventilation. Now, what is syndrome 5? Syndrome 5 is dark brown urine, renal failure, paralysis, bitten on land, that is Russell's viper. So, 5 syndromes you have explained that syndromes are here. So, syndromic approach is always better. You can identify what syndromes are there in patients. So, so that you can know what type of snake has bitten with cl other clinical findings, history. You, you can probably identify what has bitten. But whatever it is, if the clinical features are there, you have to treat the patient. Now, severe envenomation, early cruise, we have already discussed uh, all these things uh, previously. So, I am not going to uh, this slide again and again. So, WHO has given a guideline. Now, how do you diagnose bleeding tendency in a snake bite victim? So, normally in secondary, uh, primary and secondary care and this we can go for 20 minutes clotting time. You take blood and keep it like this for 20 minutes. So, in a patient who is a, bitten by a hemotoxic uh, uh, snake, there will not be any clotting after 20 minutes. So, every 20 minutes you have to repeat the test. But in a tertiary care center or where there is availability for PTINR, that will be a better test because that detects this problem very fast. So, that is very important. So, if PTINR is available, that is a early clue for the bleeding tendency. But if that is not available or uh, your center is a remote area or you are transporting the victim from a distant area, you want to make a diagnosis every 20 minutes, take blood and keep it like that. If there is no clot formation, then that is envenomation. So, that is very simple. Simple test does not require any expertise, but other one you need a lab for that, but that is always, that PTNR is always better than this test. Now, other investigation we routinely do, total WBC count, hemoglobin percentage, uh, platelet count, uh, 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 peripheral blood smear, creatinine, uh, CK, creatinine kinase that is mainly in viper bite, creatinine because renal failure can be there, hyperkalemia or abdomyolysis. Then you have to diagnose DIC. That is one of the most important problem in most of the snake bites. If elevated PTINR is there, check for APTT. That is also elevated, then check for serum fibrinogen. If that serum fibrinogen is low, then it is DIC, disseminated intravascular fibrinogen. So, elevated PTINR, APTT, low fibrinogen, that indicates DIC. The treatment is slightly different for DIC, that is why this is very important. Now, you know that there are two cascades for our coagulation uh, coagulation formation, uh, intrinsic pathway, extrinsic pathway. We check uh, APTT on one side, PT on other side and fibrinogen that is the last step. So, this will be elevated, this will be elevated, fibrinogen will be low that, that shows DIC, disseminated intravascular coagulation. That is very classical finding in seen in uh, viper bites. Now, once you diagnose that patient is having clinical finding because of snake bite, then snake, snake bite envenomation, then you have to take air, airway, breathing, circulation in emergency room, check for respiratory failure, check for arterial pulse, BP, level of consciousness, exposure to uh, cold or uh, something like that, then you can immediately start ASV. So, ABCD should be taken in emergency room, then only you can go for ASV treatment. If there is a circulatory failure, patient is having hypotension shock, you have to correct that first. If the patient is having breathing difficulty, sometimes you, you may have to put the patient on ventilator before starting ASV. So, urgent resuscitation is required in some conditions like shock, arrhythmias, uh, hypotension or breathing difficulty, hyperkalemia, all these things. So, you may have to treat urgently before starting ASV. So, that is why I discussed before. Now, polyvalent anti-snake venom is available in our country that is mainly targeting the big four, not the big five. 
uh, it can target, uh, it can neutralize the venoms of Cobra, Crate, Russell Swiper, Saw Scaled Viper, but Humnos, Pit Viper, Venom may not be completely neutralized by your ASV, our ASV, what is available in India. So, these type of patients, patients who uh, had uh, got a, who got a uh, bite from Humnos, Pit Viper, they can have prolonged renal failure. We should understand that a patient who is bitten by uh, Humnos, Pit Viper, they can have prolonged renal failure, that is very important. Now, polyvalent as we, uh, uh, the dose is debatable, but normally we give around uh, 10 to 20 vials, that is all enough. Sometimes we can see the uh, doctors are prescribing 45, 50, 60 vials, they are all not, not required. You may maximum you have to give around 10 or 20 vials. Uh, 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 very few numbers of patients may require 30 or 35 vials, that is all. So, no need to give uh, large amount of ASV in any patient, uh, this around 20 vials will be enough in most of the patients. That is because of the neutralize, neutralizing capacity of uh, this venom is studied, antivenom is studied for the average bite of uh, Indian uh, poisonous snakes, you can refer this chart, I am not going to the details of that. So, where will you give? That is also very important. So, local swelling, tender nodes with fang marks, hematological abnormalities like 20 minutes uh, whole blood clotting time and uh, PTNR should be checked, neurotoxic signs should be checked, ptosis, ophthalmopegia, hypotension, shock, oliguria, red urine, elevated CK, potassium or creatinine, you can start the treatment. <coughs> and do not give too much of antivenom. In any uh, snake bites, there are certain guidelines for that because we cannot misuse this uh, precious uh, uh, drug. So, we have to be very careful. Now, the another question in snake bite is whether test dose is required or not. The answer is it is not recommended. You cannot waste your time just by giving the test dose and waiting for half an hour. You have to start anti snake venom as fast as possible once you make a diagnosis of uh, uh, poisonous snake bite. That is because the mechanism is totally different. It is not IgE mediated. It is a complement uh, activated uh, this one. If, if you give a test dose, sometimes uh, it can produce adverse effects in patients only because of the test dose. So, straight away start the ASV if you are making a diagnosis of um, poisonous snake bite. Now, prophylactic regimes like adrenaline, avil, uh, hydrocortisone, all are recommended or not? That is the question. Answer is it is not recommended, but you have to be ready with adrenaline. That is very important thing. You have to be ready. Any time patient can develop uh, adverse effects because of ASV. So, you have to be ready with adrenaline. Most of the emergency rooms will have loaded adrenaline uh, in, in their emergency room. So, that will not be a problem in a very good emergency room. But remember uh, other regimes like uh, uh, I will that is CPM or hydrocortisone or adrenaline before ASV is not recommended, but you have to be ready. Now, average doses again I have told that the higher, higher doses are not required. The Indian cobra around 10 while that is 100 ml, uh, common crate 100 ml, uh, average dose, Russell swiper 100 ml that is all. Uh, 10, 10 vials initial dose, then saw scaled viper 50 ml that is 5, uh, five uh, vials. So, that is the initial dose required, but if you are seeing a severe bite, by your clinical experience you know that this patient may require 20 units of anti snake venom ASP, you have to immediately transfuse that. You can see some doctors give, will give one vial TID or two vial TID like that, they all are wrong practice. Suppose I, in my clinical experience, I believe that 10 vials are required for this patient. This 10 vials should be started as fast as possible, then it, we should wait for the clinical response. That is very important. So, slow, slowly giving ASV is not recommended. Repeated dose are not recommended. Whatever you want to give, like 20 vials you want to give, give it as a bolus initially itself. Bolus means I will tell you how to give this. 
Now, how to give ASV? That is very important. You are going to dilute one vial in 10 ml. That should be given over 10 minutes. Suppose I am giving 10 vials. It should be diluted in 100 ml. It should be given in 100 minutes. That means uh, around uh, uh, 100 minutes means 1.5 hours, 1 and a half hours. Uh, around 1 and a half hours you have to finish it. So, that is a, uh, that is a uh, dose of ASV. So, that all by clinical experience and the local envenomation you will learn in your place some patients uh, some bites may require 5 vials some bites may require 10 vials some bites may require 20 vials some may require 30 vials that's all more than that that is not recommended in our scenario so response to asv clinically we have to find out whether the patient is improving or not you can see the improvement in ptosis you can see improvement in breathing single breath count is very important you can see the repeated ptnr Every six hours, you have to check the PTNR, you have to see the urine routine, you have to see any bleeding tendency. That clinical findings are very, very important to uh, limit the dose of the ASV. So, that is also very important. Now, how long you can give ASV? As far as clinical findings are there, you can start ASV. See, a patient who is having uh, after a uh, few hours or after one day, patient is coming with renal failure. Uh, you think that it's a poisonous snake, but you can give ASV uh, uh, as a bolus on that day itself. So don't wait for uh, further deterioration. That is very important. So you can continue the ASV as far as new clinical findings are forming. But remember, once the poison or once the uh, toxin go and attach to the target organ and damage the target organ, patient will not recover back. That is very important. Now, patient with neurotoxicity, what you can give is, patient with neurotoxicity, you can uh, give uh, neostigmine, that is very important. Neostigmine can be given, but remember, atropin should be given before neostigmine, that is very important. To avoid the adverse effects of uh, neostigmine, you have to give atropin before the neostigmine, that is also very important. So, in neuro neurotoxic bite, uh, ASV alone will not be helpful, you have to give neostigmine with atropin. Some patients may require mechanical ventilation also. Now, how do you manage the shock? That is also very important. Fluids or uh, adrenaline can be started. In anaphylactic shock, because of your ASC, adrenaline is a, a choice of the treatment. But whereas other types of uh, shock, because of uh, snake bite, including uh, hemorrhagic uh, shocks, you can give IV fluids, blood, noradrenaline, hydrocortisone like this. There are a lot of reasons for shock like uh, antivenom reaction, vasodilatation, cardiotoxicity, hypovolemia, respiratory failure, acute pituitary adrenal insufficiency, especially in the viper bite, septicemia, all these things can produce uh, shock. But antivenom reaction uh, and anaphylactic shock, adrenaline is the treatment. Now, supportive therapy. Uh, if the patient is having bleeding tendency, you can give FFG, FFP, fresh frozen plasma, 15 ml per kg. Cryoprecipitate can be given in patients who is having low fibrinogen levels, less than 100. Uh, cryoprecipitate, 10 to 15 units of cryoprecipitate for every 2 to 3 units of FFP should be given. Antibiotics are not really indicated in snake, but, but if the patient is developing uh, like cellulitis, the, especially in viper bite, you have to give preventive antibiotic which can cover anaerobes. That is very important like augmentin or uh, amoxicillin or ampicillin will be enough or crystalline benzene also will be enough. Cytosorb therapy is a newer therapy uh, along with your dialysis mission. We can do to save some of the patients who is having severe envenomation who are not responding to your treatment. Cytosorb therapy is also can be tried. Now, fasciotomy, uh, that can be done only if the patient is having severe tenderness, swelling in the bitten area. If, if the patient develops compartment syndrome, they are not getting pulse, uh, a disproportionate pain on the area, that all indicator of uh, compartment syndrome, fasciotomy can be tried with the help of a surgeon. No follow-up is needed. That is very important because some of the patients with the viper bite can develop pituitary adrenal insufficiency afterwards. So they should be followed up and treated for that. That is also very important. I am going to the not going to the details of that. So we have uh, come. Up, we have finished 
uh, one of the important topic in emergency room that is poisonous snake bite. Clinical features are very important than identifying the snake or identifying the fang marks. Without fang marks also sometimes you can have clinical finding especially in crate bite. That's why the, the clinical findings are always, always important. Clinical findings can be local clinical findings like viper bites will have more local clinical finding but cobra and uh, crate can have more systemic clinical finding like ptosis, breathing difficulty, whatever it is. If the clinical findings are there, we have to start the treatment. ASV is the only available treatment in our country that is against big pores. Humnose pit viper can be covered by ASV, not fully. That's why humnose pit viper patients can have prolonged renal failure. You can see if all of the humnose pit viper, you'll understand that. They can have more renal failure, more profound and prolonged renal failure than any other snakes. Some, patient, some patients with a neurotoxic bite may need neostigmine. Cobra bites uh, respond better than uh, crate bites in that aspect. Some patients, they need mechanical ventilation. They may not respond to your ASV. They may not respond to your neostigmine. In that type of patients, to prevent respiratory arrest, you have to put the patient on ventilator. And antibiotics are not really recommended, but if you are having a lo more local symptoms, you can go for a drug which covers the anaerobes that can be started. There is no uh, prophylactic treatment, there is no test dose before ASV, that is also very important. Thank you.